I'm Marcela Pena and welcome to Adobe News for Friday, May 16th. Sports at Adobe are at an end and that means it's time for one of our favorite features. Every year, Adobe News votes on who the top athletes are on campus. Here's reporter Catherine Sorto with the story. Alright guys, so all of the votes are in from all the Adobe News reporters that have followed these teams throughout the year. So without further delay, here's this year's Top Jocks. Number 10, Jake Mendoza. We start our list with the All District second baseman and team captain. Jake's dedication helps him win the defensive MVP for the team. On a team loaded with talent, Jake's stellar play helped the team win the district championship. A feat that the Horns haven't done since the 90s. Number 9, Jay Jerome. Coming in at number 9 is the only freshman on the list. Jade was the District Newcomer of the Year for the basketball team. She was also named First Team All-District. A two-sport athlete, she qualified for regionals and track. Number 8, Ruben Vargas. Ruben is a competitor both in the classroom and on the tennis court. In addition to being in all honors classes, Ruben held down the number one single spot for the Longhorns. Just a junior, Ruben has already won a district title and was one of 12 tennis players to make it into regional competition. Number 7, Marvin Solis. The captain of the guy soccer team comes in at number 7. Marvin was named the MVP of the team and helped lead them into the playoffs in what is one of the most competitive districts in the state. Number 6, Kevin Wynn. Time and time again, our number 6 athlete proved his value to the team. A standout competitor in both individual and relay races. Kevin collected numerous medals while also having a strong showing at the city champs meet. Number 5, Mariah Escobar. The defensive MVP for the district comes in at her number 5 spot. Mariah has been a mainstay on the team throughout her high school career. Her defensive skills earned her all district honors and helped the team make it into the playoffs. Number 4, Darobi Stenlin. The MVP of the football team comes in at number 4. Several players contributed to the Longhorn running game, but not more prominently than Jarobi. He had twice as many carries as the next closest back while also scoring 9 touchdowns. Number 3, Rosie Charles. A bowler comes in at our number 3 spot. Rosie Charles and the girls bowling team stayed under the radar most of the year despite the fact that they were the only team to qualify for state. Number 2, Michael Munoz. Another member of the district champion baseball team makes our list. Michael Munoz posted a 9-0 record on the mound as a pitcher during the regular season that included an impressive win over Pearland, which at the time was ranked number two in the nation. And this year's top jock, Ben Arnett. This year's top jock is Ben Arnett. For the past four years, Ben has dominated on the golf course. He is a two-time district champion as well as a regional champion. Ben is the only golfer in Dolby history to qualify for state. He dominated in tournaments all year long and will continue his career next year at the college level. Congratulations, Ben. You just got awarded Top Jock of the Year. Well, how do you feel? What's going through your mind right now? I'm honored. Very honored. It's a very great thing to see that this has paid off after four years. It's been a lot of hard work and it's just been, it's kind of shock because there's so many good athletes and being named Top Jock is really, it's an honor and a privilege. So what's next for your sports career after high school? Next year, I'm going to be going to University of Houston. Um, I'll be try to be playing four years of varsity golf and traveling across the country is to play and hopefully win a national championship. Congratulations to all of the athletes who made this list. Reporting for Adobe News, I'm Catherine Sorto. 
The ending of the year also means the beginning for a new group of leaders to take over next year. Here with the story is Jackie Farah. With this 2014 school year coming to an end, our organizations at Dolby is getting new officers. For the first time in approximately 30 years, the Lariettes elected their colonel who unexpectedly is a junior. It's a huge honor and I'm very humbled and grateful for having the position and I'm excited to take on the challenge. Congratulations to the Lariettes reporting for Adobe News, I'm Jackie Farah. We now know who has a prestigious honor of speaking to seniors at graduation. Reporter Carmen Gonzalez has more. Hey guys, with graduation right around the corner, here are your grad speakers of 2014. Handpicked by a committee determined to make graduation an unforgettable moment. Reciting the first prayer will be Nisha McAfee. Following Michael Beltran and finishing off graduation will be Tanya Torres. It's definitely been a goal. Ever since I was little, I wanted to be, you know, commencement speaker of my class. So I'm really glad I got to achieve this. This speech is more of like a motivational speech, but also celebrating just the fact that we're seniors and we're finally graduating. It's an honor to be able to speak at graduation. Congratulations to those who are privileged to do so. Reporting for Adobe News, I'm Carmen Gonzalez. Two big events are taking place next week and you have a chance to take part. The first one is the annual Seniors Helping Seniors event. Here's Jasmine Munoz and Alexis Espedia to explain. Hey seniors, it's that time of year again to lend a helping hand. Here's some things to remember. First, what to wear. No tank tops, no short shorts, and no flip flops. Instead, wear a t-shirt, proper length shorts, and tennis shoes. Also remember to bring a hat, sunscreen, glasses, and bug spray. Meetings will be held today and on Monday. Seniors, be at school at 7.15 Friday, May 23rd. Don't be late. Can't wait to see y'all there. Reporting for Adobe News, I'm Alexis Espitia, and I'm Jasmine Munoz. The other event going on is the annual spring game during Mega Lunch. Here's the new football crew chief, Talisha Eisenhower, with more. Just because school is coming to an end doesn't mean we don't have teams hard at work. The football team has been practicing and perfecting plays and techniques. Spring ball this year is preparing the team for a challenging season in the upcoming fall. How does it feel to be back on the field? It's still amazing, it's still amazing. We're ready to ride with our other teams. Where do y'all see yourself next season? Oh, we 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 taking it out. We taking it out. We're taking best first round. Don't see that this year. Camera up there to the top. <laughs> the goals always stay. Playoffs for sure. Step by step. Day by day. Remember, spring game this year will be held during Mega Lunch on Friday, May 23rd. Cost to get in will be $6. Be sure to come support the boys at their game on Friday, May 23rd. Reporting for Adobe News, I'm Talisha Eisenhower. Speaking of football, some of the biggest guys on campus recently took part in a unique challenge at Manville. Here with the story is Nathaniel Flores. Hey guys, I'm here at Manville High School for the annual lineman challenge. Let's go check it out. The offensive and defensive linemen competed in a series of challenging events such as tire flips, bench press, truck push, dumbbell carries, and sled push. Xavier Rodriguez had the fastest time on the tire flips at 23.5 seconds. I had the most reps on bench press, repping 185 23 times. The big boys also pushed a truck at the time of 45.18 seconds, finishing with one of the best times. After these events, we had a 30 minute break to prepare ourselves for the second half. All right, so we're halfway through the competition. How do you feel? I feel good. We're out here working hard, working as a team, sticking together. Squad. Are y'all ready for the second, second half of the tournament? Yeah, I think we're ready. We had, a, we had about a 30 minute break and we're refreshed and ready to go. 
In the second half, we had an intense battle of tug of war and harness battles. Tyler Alfred demolished his opponent at the harness battle. Dixie Wooden the third also put up a great fight in tug of war. All right, coach, how do you think the Fat Boys did today? I think the uh, the offensive line, the defensive line did very good. They competed real hard. You know, it's a lot of teamwork. Everybody cheered each other on. It was a good thing for us. Good job to the linemen that competed in their tournament today. Reporting for Dobie News, I'm Nathaniel Flores. The yearbook is finally complete, and it's now our time to purchase a yearbook. Here with more information is Brenda Oyavides. How did you create the theme? Our theme came from when we were at camp. We were in class, and we were uh, looking at all the other covers that had been designed last year, and we just kind of came up with the idea of time, and like time is precious, so we wanted that to be our theme. Why should people buy this book? It's an amazing book, and it's the best one Dobie's ever created. Everything about this book is better. Better photography, better design, and better writing. When will this be released? Okay, the book will go on sale May 21st through May 23rd. It'll be $75, and we'll be in the concession stand all day. Make sure you buy your yearbook. Reporting for Dobie News, I'm Brenda Yudvidas. That'll do it for Dobie News. For a replay of today's show, you can find us on SchoolTube and YouTube. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Dobie News. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here next week. Bye!